Good evening, fellow degenerates. Mickey D here for Cold Beer Sports on Christmas Eve, just gone five o'clock. Um, the last video I done, I lifted up the guitar and I played a song for you, but uh, they wouldn't allow it on YouTube, so I had uh, Mad Merrigan had to uh, block the end of it, so you couldn't hear that. But it's on uh, it's on Facebook. Anyway, uh, I gave three horses anti post for that. Um, uh, Silver Hallmark, um, Captain Drake, and Lost in Translation. Lost in Translation has gone out to 14s from 12s. That's probably with the rain that's on the way or supposed to be on the way. Captain Drake is still um, not guaranteed a run. Um, the declarations must be tomorrow morning. I thought they were today. Um, and Silver Hallmark is 3 to 1 or 100 to 30, as I suspected he might. So he was a great each way bet at five to one. So hopefully uh, he'd have to be in the first three if he doesn't win it. For my sake anyway, because there's a nice bit on. Um, I went through all of the cards. It was half three to go to bed last night. Uh, well, I had an interruption of a phone call for an hour and a half about horses in between. But I um, went through a lot of them. So what I did was I went through a lot of the handicap hurdles uh, with a view to um, finding horses that I thought were overpriced and I found three um the first one is in uh the 147 at Huntington a horse called London Eye it's a top weight um it's raised 111 it was uh rated 70 on the flat it's uh, trained by Chris Dwyer and Jack Tudor has taken three pounds off uh, he won a couple of races on the flat and he won he won very nicely in Worcester over two miles on uh, on good ground. Um, and then he was second over two and a half mile in Worcester in October to Big Bad Matty, who was the 72 favourite, who was a very decent horse. So reading between the lines, I'm trying to, that uh, he had a run over the goo in uh, Suddle there uh, about nine days ago. And uh, over two miles too. And it looked like if they were just trying to get a run into him, you know, for uh, St. Stephen's Day. Uh, it's not an Irish owner. It's, uh, it looks like it's a Chinese owner. But I, I he might be like looking for a little tangle. So he's he's uh, 12 to 1. And the bookies are paying four places. So I thought it was a good each way bet. Uh, I'm not going to suggest a one pint, two pint, three pint or anything on these. Whatever a person does bet on a Stevens's day, if it's a pound each way, a five each way, a ten each way, whatever you're doing, uh, or just have a look at the horse and look at the race. Um, I'm just trying to steer you in the right path, but you don't have to go that path. You know, the paths of life vary. The other one is uh, the, the 315 at Limerick, a, her a horse called Arvicta. Trained by Jimmy Mangan. It's a lightly raced horse and won a pint to pint in February 2020. And it was uh, just over 12 months ago, it was fourth in its first beginner's chase. And then it ran again before it ran St. Stephen's Day last year in Limerick in a handicapped chase over two miles too. And he went off 11 to 4 favourite. Now something went amiss because he jumped the third last in third and he was pulled up before two out. And he didn't run until uh, the 16th of December, uh, which was nine to eight days ago. And it was in the race won by Brandy Harbour, who is the nine to four favourite for this. And that was over two mile. And he stayed on nicely to finish fourth. And uh, he won a pint to pint for Jimmy Mangan as well. So the step up and trip to two four will suit him. Uh, Jim, that Brandy Harbour went out in front that day I think he'll be closer to him and I'm hoping that he'll be in to get into the money at least they're paying five places on that and he's 14 to 1 and I think he's an each way bet they're the kind of bets that I'm trying to get uh, at this on Stevens's day I, there's a couple of short ones but we'll come to them in a minute the other one I thought was overpriced is in the 145 at Leperstown a Tony Merton horse, and it's not the one that's favourite, it's at that six to one favourite. But I was looking at Belgo Prince, 20 to one. He's off 97. He was the one that ran in Cheltenham there in November, 
and he was 105 that day and there was money for him like 20s into sixes or eights or something and he he has one on the flat he won on the flat a mile six on yielding ground in Navan of uh, 60 um, so the horse that's favourite was only rated 45 with Tony Merton so this one was a superior beast in the stable and uh, he had a, a spin on the flat in Dundalk since uh, since that run in Cheltenham so I throw that out the window because prior to that he had won a race by three and a half in Navan uh, on the flat like so he's 20 to 1 and they're paying six places so I thought he was worth an each way bet he's carrying bottom weight uh, 9 stone 12 or 13 or something and uh, Peter Carberry has taken the ride so uh, it's just tempting to look at Tony Merton has won two of those before I think it was 2014 and 15 he won but both of those were like 9 to 2 and 4 to 1 but maybe the money come for this again but we'll see then I have uh, I have two bets that two horses that I had written down so I might as well share them with you uh, one is on the 120 at Kempton Danny Kerwin I know that he's 8 years of age and I know that 6 year olds has won the last 6 runnings of this and I know I shouldn't be tipping him up but this guy has to go right handed and any time he goes right handed he was he's been first and second in his two runs at Kempton um, he jumped violently to the right in Cheltenham the last time I think it was a podcast we done and I think myself and uh, Joe and Paddy the three of us tipped him as our nap at the meeting and he finished second but the the winner went in again annual victus Invictus and uh, the fourth and fifth have won uh, as well so it seems that he needs to go right handed now I know that uh, the two six year olds Bothwell Bridge is one I tipped up uh, previously that one won the day and Mr Coffey is a decent six year old as well but I'm just thinking uh, this may be his day uh, uh, Nichols Cobden Boxing Day whatever you call it in England so I'm and he's a uh, seven to two, hundred to thirty, something like that. And the other one is uh, one that I backed in the Punchestown bumper. The last one in at uh, the festival was Apollo Ten, uh, Arthur Moore for Chris Jones. Um, he got a howler of a ride up that 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 day, and he was twenty fives into nines. I was on him at sixteens, and I had him down in my notebook saying whenever he'd run again in a bumper, I'd back him. So I haven't backed, but all I can see is four to one. Um, so. Maybe the other book, that's with the three that has them priced up. So maybe he's, he's bigger with some of, the, some of them. But I expect him to run a very good race. Uh, the, them colours has no bad stock. I know there's money for uh, Elliot's horse, uh, Pat's Choice. Fives into 11 to 4. But uh, maybe do a reverse forecast uh, But um, in that race as well. Anyway, Mickey D, have a very Merry Christmas. I'm rushing a little. Going for a couple of scoops. It's closing time at 8 o'clock, so we have to get a gallon in. Happy Christmas to everybody, and I might be back on Stephen's Day, or if not, the next day after. Happy Christmas. Good luck. Over and out. Bash those bookies.